Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. My name is Dina, and this is my channel about cross stitch. In case you just happened in today, I'm going to move my stand out of the way. There we go. Today, I was working on a prompt in several areas, one of which was a whip of my choice, which I had to do 100 stitches for. And yet, there were a couple of other prompts that I was working on that were going to require me to do a little bit more. And um, so I decided to get busy doing that. I had a challenge in my Daily 30 group uh, that I wanted to finish, mainly because I wrote it. <laughs> I didn't want to write one and not participate fully. And I had two more of those to meet before uh, the end of next week. So, um, one of them was to stitch in green, to use green threads, any amount of colors you want, you just had to record enough numbers to get your total. And then the second one was to stitch on something where the ground surface would be hard to traverse. It turned out I could use the same whip for both of them. So since it was a whip of my choice in one group, I chose the whip that I could use twice to finish my challenge on the Appalachian Trail. So I pulled out my small gift and I'll put a picture in here of what it's gonna look gonna look like from the pattern cover. And then this is where I've gotten to today. I finished the green in her dress. Those are definitely green stitches, no doubt about it. And I did a lot in there. All total, um, probably over 400, 500 stitches. But I split that up into different um, goals that I was meeting. I did 100 stitches for my bingo, and then I had to do 200 stitches for each of the prompts in my Appalachian Trail Challenge. So I did that. Now I did have a coupon I could use um, to reduce one of those prompts by 100 stitches and get credit for the 200. So I did stitch the 100 and get credit for two. So I probably put in a total of 400 stitches in this today if I add them all together. They're all separate, of course, posted in different areas. But I think that dress is coming along beautifully. I love the way that it pops on the blue fabric. And the next time I pull it out, I will definitely work on the flower. And in fact, I have this down for my Daily 30 um, group as well for the letter E. And the reason it's for the letter E is that Mary Engelbrecht is the an artist who designed this piece before it was converted to cross stitch and so she is the artist and I could I think use it for the E in that um, and so I have to do 300 stitches in that so maybe I'll get a little bit of that flower completed when I have to do that much I thought about doing it today but I feel fatigued with this dark blue um, it's getting late in the day my light is fading and I've already, you know, stitched on this for three prompts. So I think I'm gonna put it away for a few days and let it rest. Um, and then when I start on it again, I'll do it early in the morning, like I started on it uh, in the afternoon today when it was still bright and shiny <laughs> and sunny, you know, that sort of thing. So the next thing I wanna tell you is that I have a whip go start that I need to do this month and it is, I've used it in a couple of prompts. I've used it for my daily 30 acrostic. I've used it for my 24 hours of cross stitch acrostic as well. And if I want to, um, in fact, I did. I marked it out and changed it. I'm using it in the magazine monthly challenge as well for one of the O's in roots because this is called old glory it's a little house needleworks pattern and i have the called for over dies for it 
This was one of the ones I kitted up um, when I pulled my Whip Go box together, all the box of all my starts for the Whip Go for this year. And I actually took the first half of the box that was just in order of, of you know, how I had put them on my Whip Go board. And I went ahead and kitted up the front half of the box, um, knowing that if others were called, since I had a whole month to do them, I would either get the fibers at that point and I would have time to do that, or I could use DMC. So I tried to limit my cost to what my um, Stitch from Stash had in the budget. And that's why I only kitted up a part of them at a time. So here are the called for flosses. And this is a scrap of linen that I purchased, a small piece of linen, a nine by 13 wool chilt. And I probably, I either got it off a freebie table or I purchased it as a sample, but it is, it's pretty stiff. Um, but I think it's gonna be beautiful for that piece. And I think the fibers, I do need to look though at the, um, I just noticed this fawn color may or may not show up on this fabric. Um, I need to look and see where it's used. So if it's used anywhere where it's by itself, I may have to look at swapping out this fabric before I start it. But I'm planning on starting this either tonight or tomorrow. So I'll let you know. But anyway, getting ready to do that. I have to unkit my Kringles. <laughs> I have my bag emptied, but I have to put away all the floss. I still have them in my little box that I, I love these little boxes and you guys have been so kind to bring me some um, at various meetups. So I have a good supply now. I'm excited about that. But see, that's the number of colors other than the gold that I used. Those are the colors with white. That's all the colors for Kringles. So it wasn't that bad. All right, I will be putting those away. Ooh, loud, sorry. And um, I am gonna go check out this one color on this fabric and see what I need to swap out. If anything, whether I can swap out the color, or whether I have to swap out the fabric. But I will tell you about it when I make my decision. And in the meantime, happy stitching everybody. Hello everyone, welcome. It is Monday, August the 7th, and I'm here to give you a bit of an update for my stitching today. So far, there may be more. Today, I got to stitch with my friend Juliana, and we teased each other today because she said I had to get more stitching done than I did last time. <laughs> I reported on myself and told y'all I only stitched three letters last time. I'm happy to let you know that I did better today. <laughs> Today, I decided to work on casting a spell. I had started this band up here the last time that I worked on it. I had done the dark color all the way through. And what I had left was the orange color today. And I decided to stitch on this for two reasons. One, I wanted to finish the band. I'm on a finishing kick. I wanna finish everything. And the second reason is I could use it for a prompt. The prompt says to stitch on a whip of your choice, and then you have to answer a question about your favorite Jane Austen book or movie. But my whip of choice turned out to be this band. So I got it finished. I'm so excited. And I actually stitched 434 stitches in order to finish it, and I only needed, um, 300? Yeah, I only needed 300. So I got more than I needed, but I didn't count the stitches until I even got home. I simply was working toward a finish on that band, and I got it. So now, that means I have one section left, and it's this one up here with the house on it. So the next time that I use this for a prompt, or I decide to work on it, this is what I'll be working on and then I'll have them all finished. How exciting, I'm excited about that. I'm working on my last remnant 
of my 32 count Lugana in peanut from Be Stitch Me, which is what I'm working, making this out of. I had two remnants when I finished a, um, one of my previous stitches. And so I've done all these little ones over here on this long piece of peanut. And then when I got to where I didn't, I wasn't sure I had enough room to do anything else down here. I probably could have done a band across there, but I didn't need to squeeze it that tight because I had this other piece from the bottom. So that was from the side of my former piece, and this was from the bottom of the piece. And so I have plenty of room to do that last pillow on here and I'll probably do it over here. So I have plenty of room to cut around and everything. But one left out of the 10. Very excited about that. Had a great time stitching with my friend today and got to meet a prompt at the same time. Pretty awesome. I don't know if you can hear that thunder, but we're having horribly, horribly loud thunder and we had lots of lightning and heavy rain today. Um, it hit while I was stitching with Juliana and then it, it um, hit a small pause and I told her I'm, I'm gonna head home. <laughs> we checked the weather uh, app on her phone and it was going to start back raining in about 10 minutes and was gonna rain pretty heavy off and on till 8 o'clock tonight. So uh, I left there while I could still walk without my umbrella. <laughs> you know, I could get to the car really quick. And we don't live that far apart, so I got home right before it started raining again, which was great. Well, I am working right now on something new. I started my old glory, which is my whip go start. And I started it yesterday. And so now that I'm home from my friends and I can stitch again, I'm gonna work on it again tonight. I do have a Zoom call tonight uh, with some additional stitching friends, and so I hope to work on my old glory while we stitch tonight. And so far, I've got two of my five hours toward whip go. So I'm not gonna show it to you right now. It's on my stand and I'm gonna start stitching on it, but I'm hoping that I will be able to finish the three hours tonight. Um, it's seven o'clock right now, so if I could stitch three hours, that would be 10, and um, I would be able to complete that whip go goal, which would be fabulous today. <laughs> it would be really nice to be able to do that. We'll see. Anyway, I'm gonna get busy, and I will share the results with you either this evening or tomorrow, whenever I hit my five hours. Happy stitching, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back. Today is August the 8th, it's Tuesday, and I'm coming in early this morning to give you an update from last night. I stitched really late last night because I was talking on a Zoom call, and then I was wide awake, and I just continued chatting with my friend Donna uh, for a little while. She's probably gonna be struggling a little bit at work today because we were up way too late, but, I had a new start. It was a whip go call and it was numbered 24 and it's on my, um, it's actually on my regular whip go board. It's not even on my holiday board, even though it is a patriotic piece. I must have run out of room <laughs> on that one and I still wanted to stitch it. So I pulled it out. It is a little house needleworks. I'll turn it where you can see the picture correctly. And I'm actually using all the call for flosses. They are uh, overdides and so they are uh, classic color works primarily. There's a gassed and a weak style works in here. So I'm using them all. And it's not my normal palette. Um, they're very, this doesn't show it quite as muted as it really is, although that does look a little bit muted. It's a lot more muted than that. 
and I'm loving it. And that's not usually my palette. So um, I got started on it and I worked on it of uh, just a little bit day before yesterday. My whip go goal was five hours. And so um, I got about an hour's worth done yesterday, uh, day before yesterday. So then yesterday, um, after I got back from Stitch uh, at Juliana's house, um, I decided I wanted to pick this back up and try to see how much further I could get on my whip go goal. Because last month I waited almost to the very end of the month to hit all my whip goes. And I decided I didn't want to do that this month. I didn't want to put that kind of pressure on me. So I wanted to get at least one of them knocked out this week. And as it turned out, I had a time of zooming and stitching with friends and I just kept stitching on it. I hit my five hours yesterday plus. <laughs> I actually stitched yesterday alone 780 stitches. And the day before I had stitched enough that if you totaled them together, it's 948 stitches that I got. So I'd say that is a really good new start, wouldn't you? <laughs> well, here it is. Now, this is another big surprise. Not only am I using all these muted colors, I'm stitching on linen. Donna just about fell out of her chair. She said, is that linen? <laughs> I said, yes. I had this beautiful piece of linen um, it's a Wilchelt uh, linen, 32 count, and it's lamb's wool. And I had it in my stash. And I had kitted it up with this piece because I thought the color was so close to the called for. And I don't know what the called for is because it's not showing right here. I'm not going to open it. But you can see it's quite similar. And it was a nine by 13 piece, so it was a smaller piece. Now I've got a little bit at the bottom left over, um, but I thought, well, I'm gonna give it a try. Linen is not my favorite simply because I find it a little bit harder when the um, pieces of weave, the strands in the weave are um, not the same. And see, there's a little flaw right there. Um, I don't like slubs. This doesn't have slubs in it per se. I didn't see any slubs. It looked quite pretty and it looked fairly, fairly even. So, uh, I decided to give it a try. It's going great. I love it. One of the things is it's a little stiff. It's kind of like that stiff Ada that you can get, but it's not that stiff. It doesn't hurt your hands. It's just stiff enough that it helps with the tension, which is kind of nice. Anyway, I've never had one like that before and I'm enjoying it. So that's the beginnings of Old Glory. I've actually finished everything to do with the flag and flagpole. And now all I have to do are the words Old Glory and a pot with the little flower vine in it and the bird on the top. I'd say maybe half, I'm about halfway done. But oh wow, what a great start. I was tickled to death. And since I got in plenty of time on that piece, it was well over five hours when you add the two days together, I was able to color that number in and I got my second bingo for this um, one. And I am tickled to death. Yay! <laughs> now, um, I also, by doing that, uh, did not stitch yesterday on my bingo, which is my 100 stitches per day on something that's called. One of the reasons is the thing that was called was nativity. And I'll have a hard time putting just 100 stitches in it because it takes so much to gear up for that mentally. So I'm using it in an acrostic. And I think what I'm going to do, it, it doesn't require any number of stitches in that acrostic. I didn't put it in the one that requires 300 stitches. I put it in the 24 hours of cross stitch. So when I get the 100 stitches done or however many I decide to do, I will hit both the bingo game that I'm playing with my friends and also one of the letters 
in spontaneous, which is the 24 hours cross stitch, which is great. Loving that. Love that. So I'm going to put this away for now. I'm going to change gears, see what I want to stitch. Um, I, I did notice that I'm not getting my acrostics stitched as quickly as I normally do. And I think it's because I'm letting my 100 stitches a day dictate what I stitch on. And then it turns out almost every time that that's in my daily 30 group that needs 300 stitches. So then I, I have to stitch another 200 stitches. And then if you couple that with me trying to fight my urge to finish everything in sight, um, I just want to stitch on things and finish them. I had a hard time putting this down. I wanted to stitch it till it was done. Uh, I took the casting a spell piece that I had started um, to my friend Juliana yesterday and I finished that piece. And I wouldn't leave her house till I finished it. <laughs> Fortunately, she didn't have anything else to do. She had planned the day to stitch with me. She was very sweet about that. But, um, so I'm, I'm actually torn right now as to whether I'm going to continue working on all the prompts and um, in the Daily 30 group and all the acrostics, or if I just want to take a detour this month and just work on things to finish them. I'm very tempted to do that. Wouldn't that be different? That's not like me at all. So I'll have to think about that. And I may have to just do a little studying on what I have on my acrostics and see if something that I really want to finish is still on there. And if it is, maybe just do that till it's done and then hit it hard after I have another finish under my belt. We'll see. Anyway, thanks for letting me prattle on and try to make a decision on what I'm going to do. <laughs> Uh, I haven't started stitching yet today. I've had uh, household duties, cleaning house, linens, all that kind of stuff this morning. I just got back from taking Coco for her walk. And um, I'm running a little behind this morning for whatever reason. I didn't get started as early as I should have, even though I got up early. I don't know what took so long. I guess I was just doing extra things. But anyway, it is after 10 and I didn't even make it to Bible study this morning. It started at 10, and right now, it's 10 after. So I wouldn't get there if I left now till 10.30, which is just too late for me. I don't wanna walk in that late, disrupt everybody. So I think what I'm gonna do is capture some time that I didn't know I was gonna to have today. My husband has a ground cover that needs hemming, and I have to do that with nylon thread for him. We cut it, we've measured and cut it. I know exactly how he wants me to hem it. I just, I have to now get that nylon thread on the sewing machine and get that thing done. And I may try to get that done in this extra time that I've gotten so that he can have it to pack. Because he leaves this month on a hike. So we gotta get that taken care of for him. So that's all the news fit to print. <laughs> if I get any more stitching done uh, today, I'll certainly come back and share it with you. But in the meantime, I hope you have a wonderful day of stitching. Happy stitching, everybody. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back. Well, I got a little more stitching in this afternoon and I got a sewing project completed, so I'll tell you about that too. But I had a prompt in my bingo to stitch 100 stitches in nativity. I also have nativity in my 24 hours cross stitch and my monthly magazine challenge. <laughs> uh, in the monthly magazine challenge, it is for T, for Teresa Wentzler, the designer of the nativity. Um, and in the 24 hours of cross stitch is actually standing for an N for nativity. So three prompts with 101 stitches. <laughs> so I'm gonna turn the camera around so I can show you a little more easily what I worked on on this, but this will just remind you what it's gonna look like, hopefully, someday. Let me turn it around and share it with you. Here's Nativity. It's on my American Dream stand. It just stays on there now. But today, when I knew I needed to get a hundred stitches, I looked for something I could do fairly quickly. 
and border is always a good choice. So I extended this border down to where it's to stop. There's some wing that'll still come over here. And then I picked up where I left off in this border and I carried it down uh, a little bit further to, to where it was getting uncomfortable to try to turn my hand to stitch on that. And I took the little eyelet stitches all the way down to where I had extended the border. I counted each eyelet stitch as only one stitch. I still got 101 stitches, so I feel pretty good about that. But not a whole lot at one time, but at least it continues the progress and it met my um, prompt for my little bingo group and it met two of my acrostics. So I'd say that was a pretty good effort this morning. Now I'm gonna turn the camera back around and finish talking with you about my sewing project. Well, as you know, my husband's getting ready for another hike and that usually means inspecting equipment, buying food supplies and things of that nature. And this time my husband decided that he would like to have a, another piece of fabric that he could put underneath his air mattress when he was spending the night in the shelters. The shelters have wooden floors um, and they can have splinters in them. And he normally just puts an air mattress out on the floor. He doesn't, you don't erect your tent inside the shelter. You just sleep in the shelter. So to protect his air mattress material, he wanted to put a barrier between the hardwood floor and the air mattress. And if he's not erecting his tent, he's not getting the tent out that has a footprint in it for that very purpose. So he wanted a very lightweight little piece of fabric that would uh, suffice that he could pack up with his air mattress and could just put it on the floor. He actually ordered the fabric online and when he got it in, he had ordered plenty to make sure he had a long enough length, but it was too wide for his, um, for what, his purpose. So he needed to cut it down. And he also does, didn't want it to be the raw edges, even though it is a um, slick feeling, kind of a vinyl-y feeling thing. It's really paper thin, very lightweight, but it looks like it could start shredding at some point. So he asked me if I would hem it all the way around. Now you can't iron that kind of fabric. You can't press a seam in it. Uh, or a fold in it and so I had to finger press it uh, and I turned the hem over once and then again so there's no raw edges exposed and I used my quilt clips and I just clipped it one whole side and then I would stitch that down take my clips off as I went and um, use them to mark you know to roll up the next side it was slow going because having to finger press it um, is a little bit more tedious I was nervous because my husband is really a perfectionist, even though he's very gracious when it comes to something that I'm making for him. But uh, I got it done this morning, and it it took most of the morning. It took a couple of hours this morning. And so after I walked Coco this morning, I jumped on that project and got it done for him um, because I didn't want him waiting on me. Um, and then we had lunch together, and now we're going to take the afternoon and go see Mission Impossible. So we'll be going there in just a few minutes. So that was another reason I was so anxious to get this goal met before I left home today because I don't know how much more stitching I might get this evening. I would like to have some, but I don't know. So now at least I am current. I have today's call on my bingo to work on. And um, then I can also look to see if if it meets any other prompts. If not, I'll just do a quick hundred stitches and then I will pick on something else that's gonna meet a prompt that, um, that I need to be stitching on or would like to stitch on. So thanks for letting me share all that with you, what I've been doing today, what I've been working on, and uh, hopefully I'll get to touch this piece again soon and give it a little more time. But uh, since I'm a day behind, I'm not gonna spend the whole day stitching on it the way I have others. Um, that's kind of sad, but I do want to make sure that I complete everything this month. So 
Hope you're having a great week of stitching. And if I get any more stitching done tonight, I'll come back and share it with you. <laughs> Happy stitching, everybody. Good morning, everybody. It's Dina. It's Wednesday, August 9th. And I wanted to come on here early this morning to show you my final stitching from yesterday. It was fairly late, probably about 10.30 or 11 when I went to bed last night. But I had already videotaped a couple of times and rather than set up again and, and tape again, I thought, well, I'll just wait till tomorrow and uh, share with you um, what I finished <laughs> stitching last night and uh, tell you a little bit about what I'll be doing today. So. The prompt that I stitched for yesterday was uh, uh, two or three places. It was in my bingo, uh, at bingo, and it was also in my cross sticks. And I was able to substitute it in another acrostic so that I used it three times yesterday. Three or four. Well, I'll have to go back and look. But anyway, it's small gift. Yet again, I got to stitch on it. It was called in bingo, so I had to do 100 stitches on it. And then I went and looked, and it was in my daily 30 for 300 stitches because the last time I worked on this was for another prompt in a challenge in daily 30, and I couldn't double count those stitches for the acrostic and the challenge. They don't let you do that. <laughs> so I had to stitch on it again for the daily 30, and I thought, perfect, it's been cold, I need to do that. So I did. I did a total of 302 stitches, and I had said that the next time I worked on it, I was going to work on the flower, on her dress, and so I did. So I finished two, three colors in this flower, and I finished another three colors in that flower. So I have the center of French knots to do here. I have the center of the flower to do there. And then I've just got the vine and leaves here and another flower there. So it's coming along. Another, another stitching session should see the flower completed. And then all I have on the bottom of her dress is the fur, like on her sleeves up here. And then I think it will be time that I could start working on the two sides. There's a reindeer, a big reindeer on this side, the mama. Uh, or the daddy, because it's got horns. And then there's a little baby reindeer here with a Christmas tree in the background, or an evergreen, I guess, tree, because it's not really decorated for Christmas. Um, so this could, this is a Christmas uh, piece because it has the reindeer in it, I think. And um, we'll see how that goes, but it's coming along. <clears throat> there are big blocks of color in here for the dress. There are big blocks of color in the tree that's going to be over here so um, and even the deer I think are are fairly solid blocks of color so it should be a fairly you know easy stitch once I get that done there's a lot of back stitching to do I haven't done the back stitching yet because I was waiting to get the next row of stitches on the outside of her dress so that once I started back stitching the dress and her I could just do it all but there you have it 302 stitches, making progress on Small Gift by um, Mary Engelbrick. And <clears throat> that was for an E uh, in Beach Lover in my uh, daily 30 that I needed the 300 stitches for. So I had to use it for Engelbrick for the designer, the artist. So now this morning, <clears throat> our number that was called for our bingo is one you haven't seen in a long time. It's the one I'm stitching on 36 count, which is the highest count I've ever tried. Uh, it's Autumn in the Village. So I am so looking forward to grabbing that this morning and working on it for at least 100 stitches. I think that's the only place I am using it. I don't think that don't think it's in the acrostics. I'll have to double check um, because I am using an autumn um, piece, but it's because 
it's for the uh, last name of the designer for the N in just Nan. Uh, so I don't, I can't substitute it. It's not for the A <laughs> in autumn. So I think I only get to put a hundred stitches in that or only have to put a hundred stitches in that. Um, and so if that's the case, I will do that or I'll finish a small goal on it and then I'll come back and share it with you. Um, that's all uh, really to share with you this morning. Uh, exciting news on the home front. Our choir takes the summer off as far as practicing. We sing every Sunday morning, but we sing songs we know. Um, we work on them up until about uh, June, and then we take the whole month of July off because there are a lot of vacationing, you know, happening in July, and you'll show up for practice, and there won't be that many people there, and it gives our Minister of Music a month uh, to plan and start getting ready for the fall um, our Christmas tree and our living Christmas tree concert and then uh, maybe take a vacation himself who knows but um, it is the only month in the year that we don't have choir practice every Wednesday night so tonight we start back but we get to start back in our brand new space I'm pretty excited about it so that'll be fun for this evening so I've got to sandwich my stitching in in between I'm about to go run some errands that I need to do I'm gonna have um, breakfast with my hubby. We're going to eat out this morning. He's got a bunch of errands to do, so we're going to go to breakfast and then go our separate ways and get everything done. And when I get back, I'll get to stitch for whatever time I have till I have to fix us a small dinner and we head to choir. So that's my day coming up. Looking forward to it. And I can't wait to share with you what I get to stitch. I hope you're having a great week of stitching. Um, I did talk to my son. He is coming to visit this weekend because it's his birthday Sunday. <laughs> I'm so excited. Um, he had come up with an idea of what he'd like to do for his birthday. There's an exhibit coming to Atlanta that is a uh, tomb exhibit, and he would like to go see that, but it doesn't get here till September. So I think what we're going to do, I've, I've offered this to him, is go ahead and pre-order the tickets and we'll pay for the tickets for his birthday. And that'll be our gift to him. We'll take him to the exhibit and out to dinner or something like that. But I still want to take him out to dinner for his birthday, at least this weekend while he's here visiting because I want to celebrate it. I want to acknowledge it. And I'm looking forward to that. So, lots of home news, but I hope to be back later and show you lots of stitching as well. I hope you have a great day. Happy stitching, everyone. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back. This is Dina, and I had promised that if I got any more stitching accomplished, I'd come back and share it with you today. And so, right here before we head off to choir practice, I did want to show you my autumn in the village it's a beautiful beautiful piece and I did start in the middle on this one I started on this big beautiful house right here and I had some of it done I started at the top of the house and was been working my way down through that this came up in my uh, small bingo game that I'm playing with my friends from Alabama and yet I also had it in a a challenge with my daily 30 group that's the Jane Austen week and it said to stitch on a whip that you abandoned for a significant amount of time and I checked and I had not stitched on autumn in a village in a couple of months or more so it's one of the ones I have not worked on in quite a while and so I pulled it out and this is what I got done on it I was able to add in from these white and blue stitches across here that little beautiful uh, lattice work and all the surrounding colors in that door frame so far and believe it or not that little bit in there is 208 stitches I needed a hundred for my bingo game I needed a minimum of 200 for my Jane Austen week and um, I got 208 and I decided to stop there because this is my 36 count fabric and I'm losing the light for the day. And so uh, I could tell it was a little bit harder for me to see it than when it was bright and sunny when I started working on it. 
So I decided that was good. 200 was fine, and that's what I would do today, and so that's what I did. Got it finished. So I've caught up on my bingo, and it was one of the ones that is in my pattern to have the bingo. So that my first one of my five has been done now toward a bingo. Anyway, there you go. Autumn in the Village. It's beautiful. Um, this one is all Lori's fault. Uh, Lori from Once Upon, Once Upon a Stitch, I think is the name of it. Um, she did this one. She did it on a large, larger scale than I'm doing it. And now she's working on Winter in the Village. Beautiful. Um, in fact, I was uh, messaging with a friend of mine today um, who said that uh, Winter in the Village is on its way to her and it was all Lori's fault. <laughs> and she had started watching uh, Lori um, as a result of me recommending her. So I'm really happy, uh, Carla, that you liked her. I knew you would. I just felt like you would. And uh, I'm glad you're watching her now. And uh, who knows, maybe one day we can all be together at a retreat. That would be fun. Well, I'm going to let you go, let you get back to what you were doing. I have to get ready uh, to head out of here in a short period of time. So I want to put all this away before I do and uh, talk to you hopefully some tomorrow. Happy stitching, everybody. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. It is Thursday. It is August the 10th. And I'm here to talk to you a little bit about my stitching today. Well, first of all, let me update you on where I left off stitching this morning. I got to talk to my friend Glow, and as we were talking, uh, she was stitching on one of her projects that she's trying to push to a finish. And I was trying to complete a goal in my daily 30 challenge which is one of the acrostics beach lover and it requires 300 stitches and I had already used this piece for another um, prompt in the daily 30 group because I needed it um, because it was the only one I could come up with that had to do with food for eating or drinking and that's because this one has a crab and it has fish on it, which is food. So this is my July word play that I was talking about. There's the little crab, and there's three of the fish, and I have stitched all of those. And um, I decided that once I finished the stitches I needed for the um, challenge, then I would come back and do 300 stitches more so that I could count this completed for my acrostic. And I was using it for the B in Beach Lover because Brenda Gervais is the designer. Um, so here's where I got to, and I went ahead and put in another 351 stitches. So that hit my 300. I went ahead and did the 51 because you know how I like to do. I finished that motif, so I didn't leave it partially hanging out there. So I did the boat with the little flag and the water. You know, it's supposed to be crossing the, I think it's George Washington crossing the Delaware. That's what it looks like to me. He's got a little red coat on and everything. Anyway, that's what I did this morning while I was talking to my friend, Glow. Then I took a break, had to go with my hubby. He took his truck in very early this morning and I followed him to the repair shop. It was basically to check the alignment on his truck. He hadn't checked it in 15 years. And um, it's getting older and he's about to go on a big long drive up to, you know, New York and, and all of that to do his hike. And so he's checking everything out. So after I got off the phone with my friend Glow and I finished my stitching and put that all away, did a, a little bit of laundry and a couple of things in the house, it was time for lunch and on our way to lunch we got the call that my husband's car was ready so that was perfect timing so we went out to eat uh, just 
local uh, restaurant here that has, you know, a meat and two vegetables kind of thing because it was over near where we needed to pick up the car so we could kill two birds with one stone. <laughs> so that's what we did. We went and had lunch. I dropped him back off to pick up his car and I came home. Well, the next thing you know, it's time to start working for our bingo, which is the 100 stitches on what's called. And what was called for my bingo was my Stitcher's 12 Days of Christmas by Sue Hillis. I have not stitched on this in a very long time. It's delightful. I just don't know why I hadn't picked it up. I think part of it is that I started it and I made myself finish an entire item before I would move on or put it away because I made myself do that today. I hit the 100 stitches very early. I hit the 100 stitches, the motif that I was working on is the linen, the 10 cuts of linen, which is right here. I hit 100 stitches just doing the bow and the greenery, but I couldn't stand it. I wanted to finish that motif. I wanted to finish that little line. Well, I looked at my prompts and in my daily 30 group, I was going to use Haunted Mansion for the H in that group and then it hit me. Sue Hillis is the designer of Stitcher's Days of Christmas. So I just kept counting and I finished that section. 10 cuts of linen and there's the linen. Isn't that precious? So now that one's finished and it gave me 416 stitches and I didn't even count the back stitch. So there you go. <laughs> I didn't count the words. I didn't need to. It's just, it's enough. <laughs> it's more than enough for the 300 stitches. So I have now hit that prompt as well. So, so far on all of my bingo calls, I've been able to use them for that and a prompt somewhere else. So my prompts are being get, got, they're being completed um, in a little different manner than they've ever done before. It's my bingo that's determining what I'm gonna stitch on. So I now counted it up today and I think I have only um, five more prompts to hit in all of my cross sticks and in my current challenge. I have one left in a challenge and the rest are prompts in my acrostics. And I'm using a lot of the same, you know, projects for both 24 hours cross stitch and the magazine challenge or the daily 30 plus one of the other two. Um, so far, I only have two more daily 30 prompts because they're the ones that require 300 stitches so they make it a little bit harder to get. And I only have two left out of those, which is awesome. I won't know what tomorrow's call is until around nine o'clock tonight. So um, I have a Zoom call this evening with my friend Lori from Once Upon a Stitch. And I know we'll be wanting to talk about acrostics, but we're also gonna wanna talk about what we're stitching. And um, I need to have something at the ready that I can stitch on while we're visiting. And so I am thinking that I very well may either pull out one of my other uh, pieces that are not the 300 stitches, but there's something else that I can, can work on and I could go ahead and knock out another prompt by just stitching 100 or 200 stitches in it and uh, have that done while we talk this evening. I went ahead and took this out of the key snap while we've been talking so I could show you my progress so far. I think this is a beautiful piece and I will be making it into a wall hanging bell pull type uh, finish when I'm done with it. But I think the motifs are absolutely beautiful and I love the font that has been used. So there you go, 10 cuts of linen, it's taken care of. 
So the next one that we'll do, it will be nine bags of buttons. <laughs> I think they're really cute motifs and I think they're great little sayings and I'm looking forward to, to working on it more often. Um, now that Kringles is out of the way, you know, I have room for my next Christmas focus. You know, which one do I want to work on that's Christmas focused? And I will tell you that I would like to finish my uh, full coverage Christmas vi uh, village ornament um, before I do anything else because it's so close to a finish. Um, and it it's one of my prompts, so that may be the one I work on tonight. We'll see. But anyway, that's all the stitching for today, and I'm going to let you get back to what you were doing. Um, I've heard from our son this afternoon, um, and I'm excited that he's going to get to come up early. He has the day off for his birthday, and so he'll be here uh, tomorrow, uh, probably mid-morning. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um, hoping he'll let us take him out for dinner for his birthday, and I um, can't wait to find out where he would like to go. I uh, will tell you as usual to enjoy your stitching and um, any way that you want to do it, however you want to do it. For me, I love to do my challenges and my prompts. It just helps me decide what to stitch on. Um, I did say in a, uh, a little bit earlier in this uh, string of videos <laughs> um, that I was tempted to put away all the prompts and and um, acrostics and whatnot and just sit back and finish whatever I wanted to. And I thought about that a little bit. Um, I was actually considering it for about five minutes. <laughs> and then I decided I like the variety. And if I just went straight through one finish and then the next finish and then the next finish and not had small palette cleansers that these prompts give me that I could burn out and I don't want to burn out. So I think I'm going to leave it as is. And if I want to pick one in particular, that's my focus like I did with um, my Kringles, then that's perfectly fine too. And I can, I can leave it handy and I can work on it. You know, every time I finish a prompt, then I can work on that the rest of the day uh, for whatever time I get to stitch. So I think that may be the better solution. It's worked for me so far. I just have this urge to finish everything. And I'm looking at things that are not even close to a finish and I'm thinking, how can I get that done by the end of the year? <laughs> it's, it's as bad as starditis. I'm telling you, it's, I hope it's not contagious. <laughs> anyway, oh, you guys, have a great time. Have a great weekend. Happy stitching. Flash your teeth. There we go. Here we go. All the way Ooh, back and forth. <laughs>